During the COVID-19 pandemic, many citizens have lost their sources of income, making them unable to support themselves and their families. To help the citizens in need, the government have allocated more budget for social aid or also known as Bantuan Sosial. In order to receive the social aid, the citizens need to qualify several requirements in order to be in the Keluarga Penerima Manfaat or also known as KPM program which includes poverty-stricken citizens, civil servants, and those who are impacted directly by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, the social aid by the government include direct cash of 300,000 rupiah per family for 10 million KPM, which can be received in the period of January and April. Similarly, Bansos PKH, or also known as Program Keluarga Harapan, gives 300,000 rupiah per family for 10 million KPM in January, April, July, and October. Other than that, there is also grocery aid worth 200,000 rupiah per family for 18.8 million KPM in the period of January to December. So when it comes to policy implementation, top-down approach is basically an idea where decisions are controlled and directed from the highest level of the hierarchy within the organization. So it starts with a general idea that is passed down and details are added throughout the chains of command. Now, why is COVID's social assistance policy by the Indonesian government is considered as a top-down approach? Because as simple as it may sound, the initiative to assist the economy and welfare of the citizen came from the higher ranking of the government official and then passed down to be implemented uh, by the lower rank. As stated before, when the decision is passed down, some ideas are gradually added by the lower ranks to help the implementation process to be a lot easier. In this case, we can see how the mechanism of distributing the fresh money assistance and groceries assistance are the concern of the lower rank uh, manager, while the general idea of the COVID social assistance belongs to the president alongside his ranks of minister and also the members of parliament. All right, now we're going to discuss about few drawbacks in the top-down implementation of the Bansos COVID-19 policy. The first one is a distorted communication between the street level and the top level bureaucrat, where we understand that street level bureaucrat is the RD implementers and the top level are the formulators. Between that wide range in the hierarchical implementation, it creates such a political compromise due to its complexity. There will be actors that define the policy objectives according to their own interests. This leads to abuse and corruption with affects policy goals. And as we can understand that the, the Minister of Social Welfare has been caught because of the corruption in each pack of Bansos. Also, the, the evaluation of the implementation of Bansos is very, is very much based on the standard operational procedure in the dominance of formality. With the compliance expect, the implementer always said that the policy is, the success, is successfully delivered and or implemented but the fact is the policy goals has not been achieved people are still distressed amid the pandemic and as you can see that the policy is administratively done but the, as the policy goals has not been delivered this is very much a failure of policy implementation in the accordance of top-down implementation and now we're moving on to the recommendation by yasmin Thank you, Timothy. Moving on, there are several recommendations that could be implemented toward this kind of case. First, for the distributions of social assistance funds. Supervisions must be tightened so that problems do not occur, meaning supervising among those who take care of the social assistance funds, because there are many things that occur, such as corruptions, due to the lack of strong supervisions. Next, as Timothy has mentioned before, on how the communications between street level and the top level bureaucrats is still very much problematic. Maybe things like this should be more considered and more focused because uh, communication is really the main uh, key and when it comes to this kind of case, communication is very much important. Accuracy of data on social assistance recipient is also needed so that the, the distributions of social assistance by the government in an effort to overcome the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is right on target. 
the inaccurate data resulted in a distributions of assistance being misdirect and some even received double assistance. On the other hand, there are residents who should be prioritized for getting assistance, but they don't get it. Therefore, every political people who are involved in taking responsibilities should have an accurate de data in each sector to avoid misdirect. These recommendations that has been mentioned could be benefit the top-down planning because it helps align the project goals with the strategic goals. Thank you.